Hello everybody, Z Kachofi here. Welcome to a Z News Report. You're probably wondering what this video is about because of the title of the video. Yes, it is absolutely what we're going to be talking about. It's not clickbait or anything. It is the things that I think are bad in Pokemon Go. And I'm not saying the game is bad, but I was thinking about this yesterday and th there's, there's a lot. There honestly is a lot. And I'm going to get to why this screen has regional Pokemon on in a moment because I'm gonna I'm gonna go by step by step of what things are bad and go like uh, I, I was thinking about this because you know I I'm having a glitch in my game where I can't even do gym battles and raids and I was and I was just sitting around in a place because you know I was spending the day to do raids and everything and I was sitting around looking at my Pokedex wondering about certain Pokemon and everything and uh, I realized there are things that are bad and go and I, I want to first talk about the raids because that was one thing I was I was not happy about because they're the thing with raids is yes they're good they're fun however they're very very punishing when raids first came out it was this big thing it was amazing it was awesome people were getting together to do these battles and everything to fight these strong Pokemon but it was difficult at the same time typically level 30 P players like I was at the time could do up to at least maybe level 3 depending on the Pokemon level 4 I'm sorry my phone was not silenced once it got to level 4 you need a little more people depending on the Pokemon it could be roughly around 4 or 5 then what is it Ford and legendary yeah, then the legendary raids, you need at least five, seven Pokemon. Honestly, it wasn't that bad at first. It really wasn't, because some of the Pokemon, most of the time, you'd already have, but you're just trying to battle them to fight them. I mean, level one being, you know, the easiest one. Almost every level 20 and under could battle it. Level two, easy. Level three, easy. Level four was a little more of the challenge, which is fine. It made sense. Actually, maybe there was a level raid five. Hang on, I'm sorry. No, five is legendary. Legendaries, you know, it made sense. Six people, you got like a small squad, I would say, because, you know, that's the number of like a squad would be to fight a legendary. But uh, as raids go on, it changed. They made the difficulty go up more. I, I struggle with level threes, and I'm, I I'm actually level 36, and I'm struggling even when I'm at advantage with weather boosted, and that's, that's not okay. But uh, what really happened that was really aggravating, because the first legendary raids were the birds. And yeah, th that was fine. And I don't remember which legendary it was. But they threw in a legendary that you needed 12 people to beat. And that's ridiculous. 12 people. And they needed to all be at least level 25. Five ratio with their Pokemon just to beat this one legendary. Not only that, the catch ratio was super low. So you, it, it was almost impossible. I saw someone do a curved, excellent golden raspberry three times in a row and didn't get the Pokemon. It broke out immediately all three times. And it happens with that with every legendary now. Either you need at least like seven or eight people at a certain level ratio and if you beat it good luck catching it i get it they're legendaries but you give players premier balls there's almost no chance you have to use ra golden raspberries to help boost your chance and sometimes you don't even get those like the raid rewards started dropping bad if you beat a level three all you could potentially get is 10 pokeballs in stardust and that's happened to me and a few friends. My friend one time got two Pokeballs, two potions, and 100 Stardust for level 4 raid. That's ridiculous. I've seen people beat level 1 raids and they get so lucky that they got 15 rare candy. But how come most people that do level 1s just get like, yeah, here's 5 potions. There's no reward. You battle the Pokemon to what? Get experience in candy? Like, there's no big reward i mean the other thing is the, the grouping you need people to go and do the higher level rates 
L let me put you in this point of view. I'm a 10 year old. I'm going to school. My only time is to play is the weekend. And, you know, during uh, summer or whatever breaks. But in order for me to get to those raids, I need a ride or something. Now, is a 10 year old going to get an Uber or anything with no parental supervision or anything? No. In order for him to be a level 4 raid, or even a level 3, you need another person. If you're not with friends, then how, how do you group up? Yeah, there are Facebook uh, groups, you know, messages to do raids and coordinate, but sometimes people work. Some people go to college. Some people are commuting. Some people are busy, and I'm not, I'm not blaming people who are busy or anything. Like, it's fine. They're busy. I get it. I understand it. I can't blame them. But it's the point that you need absurd amount of people to do these certain raids. Like, I, I have done a level 3 raid against a Vaporeon. And I used all my electric types. And I was weather boosted too. I remember this. I specifically remember this. I was weather boosted with my electric types and everything. And the Vaporeon destroyed me. My entire team died. I went halfway through my second team and ran out of time. That should not happen. That should not happen. And I was, what, level... I don't know, maybe level 32. And I was using my best electric Pokemon. It, oh, and, and some of my grass, actually. I should say that, too. But the point being, I was, I had huge advantage, and I got destroyed. How is a 10-year-old, or even someone that's brand new into Pokemon, can do these raids? And like I said, the legendaries are even worse, because you need more people. If you can't get people, you can't do a legendary, which means you can't get the legendary Pokemon, which... We, we don't know if those particular raids will come back. Now, yes, I, I will defend the fact Niantic made a very good call when they made field researches that they'd done the birds and now the Reggies. That's super good. That brings a point that Niantic isn't afraid to bring back legendaries. And with the field research, it makes it more fair. But they only ran for a certain time per, per legendary. So who's to say that they will, that they, uh, will never show up again? We don't know that. We don't know what their plan is. Yes, it is fair to get a legendary that way because you use an Ultra Ball, rat, Golden Raz, and everything. But the point being is, let's say, like, you only do, like, the trios. What about uh, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza? Uh, I mean, those are the only ones because, you know, Gen 3, and we don't know what's going on with Jirachi, Manaphy, Fanfi, Fanfi, or whatever her name is. We, we don't know about those legendaries yet. We don't need... We've we seen Latios and Latios in raids, but it, that's that's still the point. Like, these Pokemon showed up in raids, and some people couldn't do them. Like, I I did a Groundon raid, and actually, Groundon was a very fair Pokemon, actually. If you were weather boosted, uh, theoretically, you could do it with five people, but I only had three other people with me because nobody else was around. They're busy. And it, it's it's a shame because Nantic wants to build this community to get people together and everything. Yes, I understand that. I understand that you want to get players to group up and everything. But the system is very flawed because there's no, like, global chat. There's no indication at a gym, like, above it says, like, yeah, there are three players here requesting help or anything. There's nothing to indicate to help you figure out what you need. Like, like there are Pokemon out there right now in the raids that people want. And there are two I, I want to get. That's the Alolan Raichu and the Alolan Marowak. Alolan Raichu is a level 3. I need one other person to help me do that. Marowak is a level 4. You need at least 3 people to beat it. Unless you're level 40s, but not everybody's level 40. And... That's a shame because that's the only way you can get those two Pokemon. You can't hatch them. You can't encounter them, as far as I know. And th there's probably almost little or no good reward after beating them besides catching them. You don't get a uh, new registration because, you know, it's just a different form Pokemon. It's just so that they don't, you know... Like, I understand why they put them in raids. They don't want to, like, have an Alolan Pikachu hatch from an Alolan Egg because there's no difference. You wouldn't be able to tell, and you can evolve your other Pikachu by accident and not get one. 
Same thing with Marowak. But the point being is these raids aren't fair. They really aren't. And people argue with me that they're fair. They can say, oh, just go out and talk to more people or anything. And that's that's a problem. Because while I was at college, there would be raids on my break time. I had to hope people were either around at college I could do it. Or people would answer on Facebook and they weren't working or anything. So what are my odds of beating a legendary? It's actually very high. Because, like I said, when they started making raids go more up difficulty, they did the same thing with legendaries. And that's that's not okay. Now, I, I will say that, yes, you can get legendaries through trading, but that's that's even worse because the trading system give me one sec I need a the trading system is also flawed because the main factor is if you don't have the Pokemon you need absurd amount of Stardust I I finally got a milk tank from a trade I need a 20,000 Stardust though and I was on their friendship bonus of level 2 or something Th that's still a lot because I didn't have the milk tank registered, but he did, so he didn't have to pay as much Stardust. That's absurd. Not to mention, I didn't get any candy. I got none. The Pokemon I traded to him because he had it registered got six candy. I got none because I didn't have it registered, and that's not fair. But uh, when it comes to trading, let's just say I don't have Moltres. And let's say uh, my friend doesn't have Articuno. I have an Articuno, he has a Moltres. And let's just say we just want to register it in the Pokedex. Okay, cool. Let's trade it and then trade it back. Eh, can't do that. Because as soon as you trade, that Pokemon can't be traded again. You also can only do one special trade a day, which a special trade is if you trade a Pokemon that you don't have registered or legendary. And those even still need a lot of Stardust. And people are going to try to argue like, oh, it's fair because you're paying for your trade. In the handhelds, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to pay to get your Pokemon or anything. Like, wh what is this? I, I didn't know we are being taxed for trading Pokemon. And it, it sucks because some people do just want to register to Pokemon. But you can't trade it back. So you need spares. Like, if you have a single Legendary, I understand when people go, Oh, yeah, that's fine. That That makes sense. But then there are other things that just don't make sense to me. And this is, this is not the game's fault. This is actually players. I have met a player one time who had over 30 Kangaskhans, which, you know, I can't catch. And it's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon, and it's a regional. And I go, oh, are you willing to trade one of those? And he goes, huh, huh, no, I'm waiting for Gen 4. I'm going to trade for all the Pokemon I can't get. He had over 30. Over 30 of them. And he didn't want to trade one because he wanted to trade for Gen 4 Pokemon. I could understand if he only had one. Or if he said he... Like if he had 10, he says, I don't know when Gen 4 comes out. I don't know what's the regional Pokemon are going to be. I would like to hold on to them just in case. Those... Those are fine. But the fact that he went, huh. Like... Like... Why? You don't need to be that greedy. You don't need to be a tryhard. And it's not just him. I've met several other players that did the same thing. I have met people who have had unknowns, which you can only get at conventions, by the way, and won't trade them because they want to trade for regionals or legendary Pokemon. And I've seen people with, like, more than 50 of one letter. Like, I got lucky that I got an unknown because my friend was willing to trade one. He didn't care. It was just an unknown. But this person was willing to find people who can't go to these conventions and everything and try to get Pokemon he didn't have. Even though, like, the, po the they, they do nothing. Like, I just wanted one so I could register it. And, you know, it's A, so that's even a bonus. But still, like, I just wanted so I could register it. This guy is saying, yeah, I'm only trading because for Pokemon I don't have. 
My friend was willing to help me and just trade a random Pokemon. I think I gave him something that actually had high IVs, but I don't remember. But there are people that are greedy out there, like straight out greedy. I've seen people who have had like 10 Lugias and they go, oh, look at my Lugias. <laughs> I'll never trade them. It, it, it's just why. Like there are a lot of greedy players and trading is just terrible because of that factor. Like they put in trade and help like finish that request that players are asking can you put in trading, can you put in trading, put in trading. Like, yeah, good in theory, you could help players get Pokemon that they want to register in anything. But there's a lot of restrictions. There's absolutely a lot of restrictions, including the Stardust, including the fact that you can't trade back. So you can't even register it and trade it back like you can do in the handheld. Because who's willing to travel to a convention to get an unknown? Who's willing to travel around the world to get other Pokemon? Like, th this is why I'm bringing up this list. Because we're, we're going to talk about this now. This is, this is the most unfair thing. This is absolutely the most unfair thing in Pokemon Go. Because nobody, nobody is willing to go travel around the world to play Pokemon Go to catch these Pokemon because they have lives. They, they, they probably don't, can't even afford it at times. Like, like I'm going to use the 10-year-old example for this time again. I'm a 10-year-old kid. I want a Farfetch. I have to travel to Eastern Asia. Where the hell am I going to pay for a plane ticket to get to Eastern Asia and back? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, Farfetch, Eastern Asia, Kangaskhan, Australia, Nistamime, Europe, Tauros, North America, South Canada, most of the continental USA parts of Mexico, Heracross, South America, Central America, Mexico, and Southern Florida and Texas, uh, Corlosa, near the equator, coastal and coastal adjacent areas, like if you're in Florida, you can catch it, Torkoal, Western slash Southeast Asia, Zangoose, East Asia, Migrates, switches regions with Sviper, Sviper, North America, South America, Africa, Migrates, and, you know, same thing with Zangoose, Solrock, uh, Europe, Asia and Australia. That can't be right. Uh, Lantone, North America, South America, and Africa. Uh, Relicath, New Zealand, Fuji, Vinat, Vinat, uh, wow, I'm not even going to try it. Uh, New Colombia. Illumis, North America, South America, Africa. Full beat. Europe, Asia, Australia. Tropius, Africa, Middle East. Like, these Pokemon are spreaded out. Like, they are spread out. Like, yeah, Zangus and Surviper switch. They, they'll they go back and forth because they're rivals. They're chasing each other. But they, they're everywhere. They, they are in different locations. And you know what? I, where is it? Tauros. Tauros. What does it say about Tauros again? Tauros. North America, South Canada, most of the continental USA, parts of Mexico. Like, these first four were the original regionals. Tauros? I remember. I caught one. And I didn't see one for months. So it's not even the fact that, like, you have to go and get them. They're hard to find. Like, yeah, I have a Farfetch because Nia Niantic made that event, you know, the global challenge. That everyone would get Farfetch if you're in the area that normally gets Farfetch would be Kangaskhan. That was a great event. But they didn't do it again. They didn't even talk about it. They didn't touch it. They thought it was bad, apparently. They thought it was absolutely a bad idea for some stupid reason. It was the best idea ever to help players that can get these regional exclusive Pokemon... And it was a great idea. But you're going to tell me a 10-year-old kid's going to go across the world to catch these Pokemon? Like, it's not even like it's in the same locations either. Because, like, I found Relicith out yesterday. He's in New Zealand, Fuji, uh, Vanatu, New Kalundia or whatever. That, that, that's not even, like, a country region. Those are those are specific locations. Like, absolutely Pacific. And they're just... I, I, I'm I'm still a little confused with Soul Rock and Luna Luna Tone because I catch Soul Rock. I don't know if they decided to switch it, but I haven't even seen a Luna Tone. I haven't even seen a Soul Rock forever. Actually, speaking of which, like I I haven't seen any of these regionals. Like I the last time I saw Tauros was maybe what two days ago. I haven't even seen Viper or even Zang, and more importantly, Zangoose forever. Like, I caught Viper when Gen 3 came out, or was Zangoose, w w one in the two. And that was it. I, I, I barely see him. Hey, you're, you're going to tell me that people are going to willingly travel across the world just to get these Pokemon? I mean, yeah, if you're in America, you could go, like, get Colossa in, in uh, Florida or something. But it, 
it's still the point that you're not willing to travel. Like, plane tickets or even boat rides, car rides, they're not cheap. They're not cheap at all. We're not made out of money. And there's no benefit for Niantic on this either because... They don't get, like, half the funds if you buy a plane ticket or something. Like, th there's no point. Like, I get why they made it regional exclusives. I really do. But it's not fair. Like, if you made more of the events where, like, Farfetch would switch with your regional, and if, you know, you're in the region normally with Farfetch would be a different Pokemon, that would be fine. I was looking forward to that event showing up again this year, but they didn't. They, they didn't make it. And it's, it's a huge shame because how else are people supposed to get this? Trading. But if you don't have it, it's 20,000 Stardust. But if people agree, they won't trade it at all. Like, it doesn't make sense. It, it really doesn't. The, this, this is not okay. It's not okay at all for, for these to be in the game. You're punishing players. You really are. Because if you don't travel the world... Oh, well, if I'm a 10 year old kid, I have to stick with what region Pokemon are in my region if I find them. Like I said, I have not seen a Lun Lunatone at all. I found one Soul Rock once, which apparently is even a North America region exclusive Pokemon. Only once. Once. It was at nighttime, by the way, but still. Th th that's insane. I didn't even know Illumis was a regional Pokemon. Like, nobody knows some of these Pokemon are regional until they look it up. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Some of them don't even actually make sense. Like, Tropius? Why is it in Africa slash Middle East? Africa can make make sense. Like, Torkoal? Western slash Southeast Asia? Like, just, just make these Pokemon be able to roam. Like, Zangus and Viper are probably the only fair ones because they switch if you still find them, though. That's the issue. Fair regionals, hard to find. And it's it's really dumb. Like, if they did field researches to get a regional Pokemon, I would be fine with that too. And, you know, Niantic is not afraid to uh, put non-legendaries because they did Snorlax at one point. But you need to give everyone a fair chance because this is not fair. Because I'm not willing to spend money to go all the way to... Australia to get a king is gone. More importantly, I'll never go to Australia, but that's a different conversation for another day. And it's not like you're going there to be a tourist either. Like if you're traveling, you know, for a vacation or something, yeah, that makes sense. But no one's willing to go for an, for just one day and fly back just to catch a Pokemon. If they can even find it. Th these things are issues. And people say, oh, Pokemon's just turning into pay the play. No, it's not pay the play. It's either you don't get the Pokemon you like or can get or deal with greedy players. There's nothing that you can do to put money into the game to help you catch these Pokemon. Like, the only thing to pay the play is probably to buy raid passes to do legendaries if you can even complete them any rate actually to be more precise you can't buy stardust you can't buy candy there's no pay the play in pokemon go like i said the only thing would be raid passes that's it and you could still get coins from within the game yeah it's a little unfair compared to what they had originally but still these are issues that need to be addressed and i hope niantic fixes them at some point no i'm not saying like hold someone's hand and give them a legendary for free or something, but make it, make it easier. Make it easier because it's not fair. Like even when people get EX raids, like yeah, EX raid passes, who's to say they can make those? Like who said that they're not busy? Who says they're like not in school? They're not working, etc. What are you supposed to say? Oh, too bad. Oh, well, sucks to be you maybe quit your life and just play pokemon like you can't tell someone that you can't you absolutely can't like it's it's not fair it really isn't
But, uh, yeah, that's my rant. So see you in the next video, guys.